chairman of Fanatics has come out on a podcast and given some very insightful comments around what Fanatics has planned for the trading card hobby moving forward. A lot of people are concerned off the back of this thinking it's going to kill the hobby. I'm going to share my thoughts on what Michael Rubin himself said and then give you some insights as to how I think Panini, I'm not sorry, Panini, Fanatics is going to make the hobby better for you as a collector moving forward. Now, this is all hearsay, just my assumptions and, and beliefs and things like that. So don't come at me too hard. But essentially, Michael Rubin, the executive chairman of Fanatics, went on the Full Sam podcast done by the Nog Boys. And around, around the one hour mark, he got asked a question around what's going to happen with collectibles moving forward, i.e. sports cards. And Michael talked you know, very enthusiastically and being super excited around how he can see a big thing happening within the space of collectibles purely because it's never been marketed properly in the past, right? You never really saw sports card being advertised in the middle of sports games on TV on, on high value ad placements, right? You, you didn't really see it that happen too often, if at all. It was really only, you know, infomercial. Sometimes you'd see it at a local sporting ground or when you're going to a game in person, maybe some signage, so on and so forth. But he talks about wanting to upscale and uplift the marketing so freaking high that it's going to be front and center when you're watching a sports game. And it's going to get people excited to bust open, you know, a box of cards. Now, he didn't allude to what the marketing might look like, whether it's somebody from a breaker hitting a good card and you're showing that in the ad, that sort of thing. It's basically their vision is to try and get as many people involved as possible, market the shit out of the industry to try and get it basically well above where it currently is right now. They see the ceiling so much higher than what we're currently seeing. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this is because so many people have seen this interview and almost shit themselves because they're like, well, if you want to try and market it like crazy, you want to get more people involved, that means the hobby is going to get worse than what it currently is right now. Because as you guys know, things are printed to death. QC is just ridiculous right now. It's just not a good thing to be a true collector because, you know, the QC is poor and you can't afford to buy anything because everything is overpriced, even though it's overprinted. So you hear this from Michael and Fanatics and you think, well, that's just going to make it much worse. But I was having a discussion with somebody on Twitter yesterday and I was thinking about, you know, how can Fanatics try and, you know, increase printing and increase the customer base whilst maintaining and keeping, you know, the scarcity for you as a collector, right? And the scarcity being, you know, if you want to hit a numbered card out of 10 or you want to hit an SP and actually have that card mean something, you need to not produce that many inserts because right now, compared to five, six years ago, you know, yeah, numbered out of cards out of 10 are still cool, but there's how many of those in each product right now? How many products get released per year compared to what happened in the past? So even though they are, you know, lower numbered, they're still in huge abundance, right? And if you go to increase the customer base, want more marketing, so on and so forth, that means that's going to get even worse. Well, you know, I think Fanatics are in a pretty unique position, given that they can, they can control, you know, manufacturing to distribution themselves, okay? Because essentially a silo, they own everything. From their perspective, they could take a volume-based approach and charge very little money for product whilst also increasing the print run dramatically and also keep the inserts low numbered and, and, and scarce themselves. And the way they can do that is, you know, instead of having a hobby box, and this is just my assumption, right? And this is just how I think they're going to manage it given that they don't want to sort of overprint the market to death, right? They've got big ambitions for the hobby, right? And they don't want that to die, right? They're not here to be a, a, uh, like a cash and grab sort of thing. They want to try and make it sustainable because that'd be the right thing to do as a business, right? If you try and burn your customers and you ruin the hobby like Panini is doing right now, you're not going to have customers for much longer. So the logic is, okay, Fanatics will say, okay, you've got 4,000 boxes of Topps Chrome that we're printing right now, baseball. Let's say 4,000 boxes. And in those 4,000 boxes, you get, you know, 400 hits, okay? 400 low-numbered cards. It's obviously a lot lower than that, but this is just an example. So they're probably going to go ahead and say, well, we want more people in the hobby. We're going to market the shit out of this industry. Let's print, you know, instead of 4,000 boxes, let's print 30,000 boxes, right? Because we see that many more people being interested. Now you hear that, you might think, well, that's crazy. You're going to increase it by, you know, 26,000. How is that even feasible? Because obviously, logically speaking, you think, well, you'd go from 400 to 4,000 to maybe, you know, 2,600 hits all of a sudden. It's like, no, well, Fanatics can do that, print more product, but keep the scarcity low. Keep it at 400, 500, 600. Don't actually increase the hits that much. So yes, you're going to have more product with less hits in them, but because they can print so much more and control where the hits are going, they can charge you less as a customer. So when you're paying $30 to bust open, you know, a hobby box and you don't get something super fantastic, you're not going to be too aggrieved, right? Rather than what you're doing right now, paying five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars up from a box of panini and either not getting anything or the thing you do get is so overly printed that it's not worth anything. And that's where I think fanatics are going. So I'm very keen to get your thoughts on this down, you know, in the comments below. And apologies if I just rambled. I just think if fanatics want to invest the amount of money they're talking about without ruining the hobby, without impacting the hobby, without making card collecting worthless, 
you need to try and increase your print runs to get more people excited about cards, but try and maintain that scarcity. That scarcity is everything, right? And these manufacturers right now have done jack shit to try and protect that scarcity for you as a collector. There are so many cards now printed out of 10 for LeBron James every single year, every single product. There's so many. You used to just have one gold per product. Now you've got black golds and all these other variations of golds and blacks and so on and so forth. It's like, what are you, what are you guys doing, Panini? Like you're printing way too much. So that out of 10 is not scarce anymore. And yes, there's more people to then chase those. But at the same time, if you want to expand and have you know, exponential growth within this hobby and have so many more customers that haven't even thought about buying cards before, because that's what Fanatics is talking about, right? You need to make things scarce. Scarcity maintains value long-term. And if things aren't scarce, you're not going to have people wanting co to collect long-term because you also run into the problem where everything is so pristine in terms of, you know, getting these high-end cards and you're grading them straight away. It's like, okay, 10, 15 years. If everybody's doing that, what makes them worth, like worth, worth anything long-term, right? And again, that's the point I'm trying to make. So I know I just ranted. Please share your thoughts on this down in the comments below. Hopefully I did make sense. Like I'm pretty excited based on hearing what Michael Rubin had to say there about the hobby. Like I think having just one house running the show with fanatics is not a good thing at all i'm not a big fan of monopolies or oligopolies depending on how you want to classify them i think it's um a very dangerous spot to be in and yes we've technically had that with panini but as we've seen the last two to three years with panini you know they want to print things to death right they don't really care about the future of the hobby they want to print things get money from you because people are still willing to buy the cards because they don't actually care they're not paying attention to the freaking product they're getting and i'm going on a tangent now but my concern then is could fanatics do the same thing Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? They don't take over until 2026. So we have still have, you know, some time to sort of see what happens. But that's how I saw, sort of see them, you know, looking after things, maintaining things moving forward. You can't, you can't expect to have that many more customers into your industry, into your market and keep things the way they are right now, because that's not going to be valuable long term. Yeah, maybe if they get so many people in and they keep the print runs the way they are now, maybe it's going to sustain it, right? I.e. everybody's going to get the hits they want. But you could talk to any true collector right now. And I don't say true collector like I've got a chip on my shoulder. Like these are the people that have kept the hobby where it is right now, you know, or got it, gotten it to where it is essentially. If they're not getting the cards, if they can't afford to buy the product, then, you know, it's a little bit concerning to where things are going to go long term. Maybe Fanatics want to turn it into like a gambling style thing, i.e. with breaking and so on and so forth. And they think that can make it sustainable. Maybe that's true. But again, whether that's going to be sustainable long term, we don't know. We know that card collecting, the way it's been collected up until... Today, from when cards were first invented in the, you know, the 20s and even the early 1800s or late, late 1800s, sorry, we know people have collected a certain way and it's been sustainable long term. What are they going to do? Want to take over? Let's sort of see. Uh, and I just rambled there. It's a really hot day in city. Forgive me. I've got freaking heat stroke. As you can see, my freaking cards it's fell down right before filming. It's not a good day. Either way, let me know your thoughts. Like I said, interesting comments from Michael Rubin. I thought it was a good chat. I'm very excited. A little bit more excited than what I have been in the past, but let's sort of see what happens. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.